Hi, everybody. I am Dr. Amelia Scott Barrett. I am a Stanford trained neurologist and headache specialist. I show people how to use functional medicine and biohacking tools to relieve headaches. And today I want to talk about something that is often going on under the surface in people who have chronic headaches that they may not even realize is there. And that is PTSD, post traumatic stress disorder. Now, I think that uh, our first reaction to the idea of PTSD can sometimes be that it is something that only affects soldiers coming home from war or situations like that, but PTSD can actually affect people uh, who have never been in any kind of a, a combat situation. It can happen to people who either directly experience an event or to people who simply witness the traumatic events. So I'd like to talk a little bit more about this today because I think that this is under-recognized and I've got some really interesting statistics to share with you about this. I'd like to start by sharing with you an article that talks about the incidence of PTSD in people with migraine. So here's the article. Let me scroll up to the top so you can see the title and you can just Google this if you wanna look at it. PTSD and migraine, epidemiology, sex differences and potential mechanisms. And what I really wanna point out here is this section. It says that the lifetime prevalence of PTSD is approximately five to 8%. That's over everybody, whether you have headaches or not. However, if you look at the subset of people in a tertiary clinic-based studies, approximately 22 to 30% of headache sufferers fulfill PTSD criteria. A third of people with chronic headaches, that's a lot. Why are we missing this? Why is this something that we don't talk about very much? I think we're all pretty accustomed to the idea that anxiety and depression can contribute to headaches. A lot of those circuits overlap in the brain, but we are not nearly as tuned in to the prevalence of PTSD in migraine. And I think that one of the things that happens for people who have PTSD is actually part of the diagnostic criteria. Let me explain. So one of the diagnostic criteria for PTSD is what we call avoidance or numbing. So let's say that you were in a very serious car accident where somebody got hurt, maybe somebody that you love, and it provoked a very intense emotional reaction in you, feelings of helplessness or horror. You may find that you tend to not drive down that street anymore. You'll, you'll drive around the block in order to avoid going to the place where it happened. You may avoid it in your own thoughts. You may tell yourself, I've processed it, and yet you still don't want to talk about it. I'm not saying that you need to talk about it all the time or that it has to bring you joy to talk about it. That's not what I'm getting at. But it may be something that still triggers you, that makes you feel upset, that will bring on intrusive thoughts or nightmares when you think about it. Do you see what I'm saying? So because of the nature of PTSD, it can be something that we tend to dismiss. And one of the things that's important to remember about this is that an experience that causes PTSD, it will cause what we call intrusive thoughts or dreams. So every time you think of it, maybe your brain just keeps going back to it all day. And every time you do, you kind of get that little adrenaline rush, or maybe you'll start having bad dreams about it when you start thinking about it again. So it's perfectly natural that we sort of want to suppress thinking about it or tell ourselves that we've already handled it. But if you find yourself where you have something in your life that's like that for you, you're avoiding it, you're numbing to it, then that could be something that is part of the fabric of what's causing migraines for you. Another example that's unfortunately all too common is the experience of sexual violence or physical violence. This very, very often uh, causes feelings of numbness or avoidance in women. Women may actually have a decreased capacity to love, a decreased interest in physical intimacy after experiences like that, which makes a lot of sense. But if you find yourself in a position where that's going on and on and it doesn't go away, it may mean that that experience has not yet been fully processed. So why are PTSD memories so intrusive? Why do they cause us to avoid or numb? Well, it's because of how they're stored in our brain. So memories that are strongly linked with emotion 
are tied to what's called the amygdala. The amygdala is a deep, deep part of our brain that is responsible for strong emotions like fear, anger. And when emotions are tied to that amygdala, then when we remember the event, those emotions get triggered as well because the memories are linked together in your brain. So some of the more common causes for PTSD in women are what we call interpersonal trauma. That means physical abuse. That means sexual abuse. And it's very common for women who have experienced sexual abuse to go into this avoidance or numbing type of behavior. They may have a reduced capacity to love. They may have very little interest in intimacy for a good reason, right? But if those are things that you're currently experiencing, it could be a, a, a clue that PTSD may be part of the underlying fabric of migraines for you. There's one more diagnostic feature for PTSD that I think will resonate with many, many people with migraine, and that's what we call hyperarousal. That is the fight or flight state as opposed to the rest and digest state. So there are studies looking at the biology of people who meet diagnostic criteria for PTSD, and it overlaps a lot with what we see in people who have chronic migraine. So, you know, multiple underlying experiences can result in the same physiology in our body. One of the things that I talk to my students a lot about is what's called heart rate variability. Heart rate variability is a measure of where you're at on the seesaw of the nervous system. So let's say that this elbow being high, you're in fight or flight. Let's say this hand being high, you're in rest and digest. It's a seesaw, right? Heart rate variability is a way of measuring where you're at on that. If your heart rate variability is low, then that means you're more in fight or flight. If your heart rate variability is high, that means you're more in rest and digest. So one of the things we see in people with a history of PTSD, as well as chronic migraine, is that heart rate variability drops. It can drop to very low levels. And just to put this in context, have you ever had that feeling of your heart beating out of your chest? You know what I mean? It's like really, really going. It's like a metronome, right? It's just super strong, regular, consistent. And while we do want our heart to keep beating regularly, we don't want it to be like a metronome. What that means is that the stress part of your nervous system has taken over, all right? That is going to lower your heart rate variability. Why? Because heart rate variability means the amount that the heart rate varies from one beat to the next. It's minuscule, minuscule, milliseconds. But when it's not varying at all, that means that your stress system is, is there. It's regulating. It's making your heartbeat like a metronome. You're having that heartbeat at pounding out of your chest experience. Whereas when you're in rest and digest mode, you don't notice that, right? When you're just chill, relaxed, everything's fine. You don't really notice your heart beating and it is having normal moment to moment variations, which is indicating a healthy heart rate variability, meaning that your heart rate does vary a little bit, tiny bit from one beat to the next. That's healthy. That's normal. That's where we want to be. We don't want that metronome heart beating out of the chest experience. So what we see is that people who have PTSD have lower heart rate variability. They're in that heart beating out of your chest mode more often. Another finding that we see both in people with chronic migraine and in people with PTSD is abnormalities in cortisol. Cortisol is your main stress chemical, okay? And when you are in an acute stressor, your cortisol goes through the roof. Now, this can actually go on for months. I've seen it. Um, but what it means is that your body's working really hard to keep up with the demands of whatever's going it on. It could be a physical trauma, like being sick. It could be an emotional trauma. It could be chronic stress because you hate your job. You're in a bad relationship, whatever the reasons are. So cortisol levels can be high early on. What we see over time is that your body loses the capacity to generate cortisol at those levels. And then you come down to a low level, and it can actually be below the normal ranges, meaning that your body is no longer able to really make cortisol in response to things like getting out of bed in the morning, which normally causes a cortisol spike. When you're in this space over here, um, we call that adrenal fatigue, and people just feel tired all the time. I know that resonates for so many of you. 
So we see changes both in people with PTSD and migraine that can be at either end of the spectrum. The cortisol can be too high, the cortisol can be too low. So part of the reason I wanna raise awareness around how common PTSD is in people with migraine and how easy it is to miss the diagnosis in yourself is because it's treatable. So there's a treatment called EMDR, eye movement desensitization and reprocessing. It is actually the top treatment for PTSD as recommended by the Department of Veterans Affairs, the VA. And part of the reason it's so successful is that it helps detach those memories from the emotion centers in the brain. So remember how I said that any emotional memory is linked to your amygdala? That's literally how it's wired inside your brain. You kind of want to detach it from the amygdala and store it in other parts of your brain, like the part of your brain that remembers how to drive home, the part of the brain that remembers two plus two is four. Not a lot of strong emotions associated with those memories, right? The way we do that is that the therapist works with you in a very safe and supported setting to do what's called resensitize you. That means they're going to walk you back through some of those memories, okay? Now you're there, you're supported. And one of the ways that it seems to help to detach those memories from the emotion is to have you do something with your eyes. So it may be as simple as the therapist saying, look at this finger, look at this finger. There are a lot of different ways they can do this. Um, I don't want to go too deep into that. I just want to say that they're doing something with your eyes at the same time. And that helps the brain rewire those memories so that they're in a more emotionally neutral part of your brain instead of being so closely linked to those emotional centers. And EMDR is fairly easy to access. You can Google EMDR therapy near me and you will probably be able to find somebody who can do that for you. So just to summarize the highlights, number one, PTSD is much more common for people with headaches than we think. Number two, you can fool yourself and think that you don't have PTSD about an event in your past when you actually do because part of the diagnostic criteria is avoidance or numbing. Third thing you need to know is that it is very treatable. There are very effective protocols that can work on those underlying PTSD issues that may be contributing to your headaches. Hope that helps. And if any of this resonates for you, please go get treatment. It will help your body in more ways than just reducing your headaches. Bye, everybody. Thanks for joining me today.